So today's video is going to be an updated video about being a admin in the Air Force. And so I recently got my seventh skill level. Well, I got it this summer, so it means I pretty much know my job. So I feel like I am well educated to give you guys a summary of what an admin does. In this video, I'm just answering questions that some of my subscribers had that I didn't answer in the last video. The views, opinions, experiences on my channel are entirely mine. They do not represent the views or opinions of the US military, specifically the US Air Force. Just had to get that out the way. So first question, topics in tech school. What is covered in tech school? So in tech school, you cover um, topics like, you go over a system called airframes you go over dts um guard and reserve you do not go over arrows arrows is the air force orders writing system and when you go to tech school guard and reserve you are put in with active duty the same way when you go to bmt so there are certain things that um you will do that your active duty counterparts they will not do and one of them is arrows so you won't go over it but it's something it's a pretty easy system it's something that you'll learn as soon as you get back from um tech school outlook so you do go over outlook you go over emails you go over how to um, set appointments how to um, get permissions to calendars which is a good um, a pretty good um, skill set because you'll do that a lot with your commander you'll set his appointment sometimes you'll need to look at his calendar to make appointments people might ask you sometimes can you put me on um, your commander's um, calendar um, also, you definitely will go over the tongue and quill. The tongue and quill is like the guide that tells you how to write memorandums and other type of government communications. And you will go over memos and memorandums. So you will be in Word, you will be in Outlook, you will be in Excel, you'll be in PowerPoint. You'll go over all that. It's a very easy tech school. Like this job is something that you have to learn it on the job to be good at it. The stuff you learn in tech school is very, very basic. Is this job flexible for people who want to go to school? The answer is yes, very flexible. If you want to go to school, you want to um, finish college, this is, in my opinion, a very good career field to get into in the Air Force because once you learn the job, it's not something that I feel personally is very demanding. I feel like um, you have to have a very customer service driven um attitude and that will make the job it, it won't feel like a job it'll just come second nature and then that will allow you to focus on school so for example um my last assignment where i was working i was working um it's called it's joint force headquarters and the location of where i was working was across the street from the university that i go to and my commander she actually allowed me to take a lunch hour class so instead of going to lunch for an hour was it two days out the week I would go to class and so I've always been a full-time student other than this last semester but I've always been a full-time student um, while I've been in school so that can tell you right there me being a full-time student being a single mom and working full-time it is doable number three your day-to-day -day task so um, being an admin your day-to-day -day task you'll do stuff like honestly your email kind of dictates your day because if you have a lot of emails um, a lot of times those emails will be taskers like people will be asking you to do stuff again if you're guard or reserve a lot of those emails might be orders requests it might be somebody asking you about um, a DTS question or can you go into DTS and fix something for them you'll also get um, you might have to do an extension that day you might have to do a re-enlistment that day you might have to um, fix up or redo a file plan that's why you have to know air firms you might have to swap equipment if you are an equipment custodian meaning say somebody has a government laptop and they say hey my laptop isn't working i need somebody to fix it you'll you might have to put a work order in to calm get the laptop down there it's an array of things that you can do but honestly you have to check your email like your email kind of dictates your day Okay, so now we're getting into the, I think this is the fourth question, so tech school length. So from my understanding, um, and I may be wrong, I know tech school is, I want to say 34 days, but either way, it's six. the tech school is six weeks, and that was the question. So, the fifth question, working with commanders. What I'm going to say is that for brand new airmen, working with commanders, working with officers, you're going to be nervous. You're going to be nervous working with 
probably anybody that's higher ranking than you um, because when you're a brand new airman you know you just came out of BMT you just came out of tech school you still you know have been you still have experienced like that shock of military lifestyle it can be stressful for some new airmen but one thing I'm going to say is that most of the time your commanders have been in the military for a while so they already know that you're probably nervous and they are normal people um most of them get pretty comfortable with you you don't get comfortable with them and when i say that i mean um most commanders that i work with i want to say not even commanders i'm going to say commanders and officers i want to say almost all of the ones that i work with that are like 05 and above they all call me by my first name like they all know that you know i'm sergeant wilson but they all call me by my first name even in emails they call me by my first name <laughs> and that is perfectly fine but i would never call them anything outside of their rank in their last name do's and don'ts because that was another question so one of the do's i will say is always maintain your military bearing and your professionalism when working with um your commander you know that is your boss that's not your friend um do learn your commander i'll give you an example so my commander i know him so well that um whenever he does dts i already know that he does not like to add any attachments so he already knows like from trial and error from dealing with him he already knows to just send me everything like i had to tell him like anything that you want to go to your dts sir you just send it to me i add it so with him as soon as he emails me i know that he likes to get his dts done in a timely manner because he is you know he's he's going by the afi and in the jtr and what you're supposed to do so whenever he travels um as soon as he sends me all of his receipts and everything I immediately go in and I upload all of them so that by the time he because usually he'll send them from his phone so by the time he sits down at his computer to go ahead and um, do his um, DTS voucher all of the receipts are already in there and it's a couple other things like that I know about him make sure you pay attention to it make sure you you kind of like you figure out you know what is most important to them just certain things like certain commanders will have um issues like you know if anybody has any pay issues and you hear about it you let me know it's just certain stuff like that that um you'll learn your commander and it, it will make your job easier because you, you'll kind of know what they're thinking before they think it and um don't ever ever repeat what your commander may have said about someone or something or, or said about a situation like say he's just walking in the office and he's mad or he's just don't repeat what he says don't do not repeat what he or she says to other members you know especially if he said something especially if he's mad about something or he finds something out you don't repeat that you don't repeat anything that your commander says unless they specifically tell you to say it you you leave that where it is unless no don't repeat nothing. Don't take anything personal. And when I say don't take anything personal, um, we're human, we make mistakes. Officers and commanders are humans as well. They will make mistakes and they're not nine times out of 10. I'm not saying that you won't have a person that's going, that's, that's not gonna yell at you. I have personally never been yelled at by a commander um, because at the same time, there is a chain of command. You sh really shouldn't have a commander and usually commanders are like lieutenant colonels and up sometimes they're majors yelling at you if anything they're going to yell at like a superintendent and then the superintendent is going to yell at your supervisor and then your supervisor might yell at you don't take anything personal like nine times out of ten everybody wants to everybody's putting the mission first as long as you keep the mission first you're going to make mistakes and mistakes are fine but you reach out for help you say hey i need help with this or and take notes like i have a book that's about it's a binder it's probably like this thick that ever since i graduated tech school i got this book i call it my me book i got this book it has i have a section out um like with little dividers of each program or each subject or anything that i learned and i have notes throughout all of them because whenever i was showing i was shown something i did not want to forget it and i did not want to be that person that keeps asking my supervisor like how do i do this again how do i do this again so i would take notes and i would reference those notes when my commando when somebody would ask me to do something and then i wouldn't have to ask her don't get comfortable i think i already said that 
sir ma'am is your best friend i would recommend if you're a new airman you address everyone as sir and everyone as ma'am i don't care if you are a senior airman and a a1c is talking to you if you keep that mindset and that mind frame you, you won't have to worry about you know being seen as not being professional Number six how to become an officer so i did wait i've actually looked up how to become an officer because i think i actually want to become an officer once i graduate from law school if i'm still in so one of the first ways you can become an officer even if you're still in is the air force academy second way for um guard and reserve and i believe maybe active duty as well it's rotc in college so a lot of people don't know that you can still be in rotc in college and be a reservist or guardsman and then once you um graduate you'll be an officer in the reserve or in the guard or maybe you can you decide you want to do active duty i don't know that process but i know that's a process another way is to apply directly for commission opportunities so i know with guard um i think with reserve as well reserve is a little more difficult but i know for a fact that with guard you can um like say me i am a admin i'm a css if we have a um, intel squadron they just had some commission opportunities so basically it's like a job announcement you apply you interview if you have the ASVAB scores right you have to take the with these braces trying to say this test name i think it's called f what whatever the air force officer qualification test that's the test you're going to have to take there's another way to become an officer and it's called i want to say slep slep a slep b i don't know but i forgot the acronym for it but basically your command says hey if they know you're in school they say hey you should go to school full-time you've been a good airman we want you to become an officer and when you graduate school we'll have a, have a commission opportunity for you i cannot remember what that acronym is i want to say slep is selected is something i'm going to put it up at the end of this video i'm going to research it and find it question number seven that um one of my subscriber asked is how do you prepare what's the best way to get airman below the zone and prepare to make staff sergeant so when it comes to airman below the zone i know nothing about that i don't know if that's more of an active duty thing or what but i don't know about airman below the zone i've heard about it but i can't give you any information on it for our staff sergeant biggest thing is get your pme done make sure your skill level is up know your job try to be a subject matter subject matter expert on your job and be respectful be friendly volunteer for everything and work on your ccaf community college of the air force associates degree it's a good job personally i don't feel like it's the best job in the air force i feel like the best jobs in the air force are cyber and intel <laughs> and i love my job but cyber and intel gives you a better outlook civilian wise after the military and that's just my opinion so thank you guys for watching this video my camera is actually overheating now and that's why i cannot wait till tomorrow on cyber monday to get a new one stay tuned for more videos and more vlogs i plan to vlog a lot more and i'm planning to let y'all in on my life a little bit you know i'm in school i'm about to start applying to law schools and i'm still in the military and i'm making it all work some type of way even though i'm stressed out so yeah be sure to like this video, subscribe, and let me know what you think. Bye, guys.